we're back on the wild west coast this week. It's mid-June and the South Island is currently in the grip of a record cold snap with temperatures plummeting to minus 20 degrees in some places. Whilst these polar temperatures are sure to test our limits, it's business as usual for the Himalayan tar, rugged up in a thick winter coat. May and June is rutting time for these majestic mountain creatures. It's also the time that the New Zealand Department of Conservation allow a fixed number of hardy hunters access into some of the most remote and pristine wilderness regions in the country in order to assist with the population management of the increasing herd. Our man Anto has been lucky enough to have had his name drawn in the ballot, so I'll be joining him on a mission in search of a 12 inch plus trophy bull. Well we've just been dropped into our 2015 winter tar block. Uh, we've got four days in this country. Uh, two days ago there's a lot of snow as you can see, but with this block that we're in, a lot of snow should help. Yeah, it's a bit of a freezer box, but uh, looking forward to seeing those first bull tar uh, mid-winter. 2015, looking forward to it. It's late in the day, so we're pretty much going to pitch camp and then maybe do a little bit of glassing. The focus is to actually pitch a good camp. We've got some pretty rough weather for the next four days. I've gone from the tropics up at, in Papua New Guinea to this, a basically freezer box in less than 48 hours, so it's a bit of a shock to the system, but looking forward to it all the same. With a solid camp made, we make use of the final hour of light to get our bearings on the block. Well, what you notice is all that tussock and scrub there. I think that's where they'd probably be. tear us up above. When there isn't as much snow, I think they'll probably find themselves, you know, not far from that kind of country. There's a couple standing right below the bottom line of that big rock, and then there's a couple down further. It's promising to have spotted animals after just a short time behind the glass. So as night descends, we're full of optimism about the three days of hunting ahead. The guys at Anaplex have come out with these little Eaton uh, LED lights. They're activated by water. So we're going to put one down just so that we can mark where our camp is. Um, there you go, it's starting to power up. I'm just going to put it over the snow here. It's supposed to last about 72 hours, which is the, just about the duration of our trip, so it'll provide us a bit of a safety guide when we come in after dark. Yeah, got woke up this morning by the old mountain alarm clock there, the old Kia. Had me up at about 4.30, sort the cat at home. <laughs> yeah, hopefully the tents will be here by the time we get back this afternoon. Those extremities get pretty cold on mornings like this, eh? Hey? Those gloves are a wonder. Hopefully that lower fog kind of breaks a bit for us and we don't have it hanging about too much. What do you reckon, Dre? How's it looking, mate? Yeah, well, the fog's a little bit low at the minute now, but... Which doesn't help glassing, but... I think the plan is we'll get over up on the other side there set up a bit of a, a, a post and get down and do some glassing but with the fog down as low as it is it makes things a bit tough so we might have to wait that out in some cases but that's the nature of being up in this kind of environment in a weather pattern like it is at the moment so we'll just plan to hunt around that it's gonna come out real good soon i can't wait to look up at tar city it's gonna be mean coming down from the north island and uh, not hunting as much as i used to you now you just forget about how grand the country is and and we clagged them with a bit of fog and then suddenly it opens up. You just see the expanse of the rock and the snow above you. It reminds you pretty quickly how big this country really is. That's why we love it. Spotted a couple of nannies just up on the face, pretty close. And yeah, not much else at this stage. I think with the amount of snow that we've got in here, normally there probably would be as much snow on those terraces where, they, where they're feeding, so they may not come down as far. But there's a bull there on that ridge, got a good bull. No, he's just gone out of view. I think we have to climb up the hill a bit. Well, we spent a bit of time watching some tar on the face up here, but because of the angle we're at down in the valley floor, I think we need to change our angle and move up the face so we can look into the basin that they're sitting in. One bull in particular we need to get a better look at. He sort of sniffed his way in through the nannies. He's got potential, but we couldn't get a decent fix on him, so we're climbing up high. Looking straight across, it'll just open up a lot more country for us, plus we can assess them properly. I'm liking these packs. The buller. Yeah. Yeah, they're big enough to um, take on a, on a relatively long trip, but they're also packed down small enough to use as, as a day pack, like we're doing. It's good being up in a little perch and being able to get a different angle and actually you know, look into some of that country we couldn't see before. It's worth the climb. We can see a lot of country now, and now we're picking up tar left, right and centre, so I'm about to scope in on a bit decent looking bull. Hopefully it's the one we're after. There's two bulls there. 
it's amazing when you just change your angle slightly, get a bit of elevation and see how much of the country that you couldn't see just, you know, we've only come up maybe 100 metres. There's an 11 there and there's, this guy's close to a 12. Yeah, that one probably close to a 12, but yeah, we're just having a, a, a good look at the um, tar that Anto spotted up there and there's a slightly more mature bull that looks a bit more serious. So we're just trying to weigh up whether he's kind of class of animal that we're after. There's another bull at the back there, can you see him? A younger one. Yeah, he's not as big as that guy, eh? No, not even close. His tips look pretty short, eh? He's got a nice mane, there's no doubt about that. But even that, like those kidney stripes don't go all the way back, they're, they're not as bleached. I just want to see front on, and see how blocky his hooks are. See that top bull, he's got the lip up, the nanny doesn't seem that interested though. I don't think he's of anything of real interest. Good to see though. It's good to see them in that kind of like rutting mode. We need to find bigger tar. I haven't even cut the mustard yet. A lot of tar around. The dog we glass the more we pick up. We're onto about our seventh bull. There's one that looks quite nice, but hopefully we can find something a bit bigger. It's not the class of animal that we're after, really. Oh, well, at least we're seeing more tar. <laughs> Getting the body moving again after glassing is a nice feeling. But the mindless exertion of climbing makes it easy to forget the dangers inherent in hunting these remote mountains. However, there's nothing like the rumble of a distant avalanche to keep you on your toes. A lot of avalanche noise going on. Bit of um, avalanche going on there. With the day heating up, these nose sorts of starts to melt underneath and all of a sudden you just get a slide. Cause an avalanche. I love the colour of those um, glaciers though, just that blue that is, just means cold. On the early afternoon, we've managed to climb quite a way up into the higher and colder reaches of the block, where the risk of avalanche is somewhat lessened due to the hard packed snow and lack of sunlight. I found another bull straight across from us. See the big flat rock there? It's just on top of that. He's surveying pretty hard, old mate. Got some more tar. Whereabouts are you talking, Anto? On that real nice grassy piece. Grassy piece. Yeah, he's starting to look better. Anto's got the best descriptions on the mountain, eh? Between that rock and a bit of snow there, you'll see it sitting there amongst I'll the rest of the snow and rock. It's like a face of rock. I'll point at it. Straight across there. It's, it's over there, <laughs> on the northern wall. OK, I'll start easy. See this big, massive rock across from us? <laughs> Yeah. Like the big one. <laughs> oh, <f> <laughs> I'll, show you the, I'll show you in the spotter, bro. He's a good bull. Come on, show us your horns better. It's pretty mature, this fella. Oh, I'll get the, the P900 on it and see if we can put this uh, 2,000mm zoom to work. Yeah, I can't quite see his horns properly, eh? Hey? He's just sitting deathly still. It's sort of getting on in the day now. We've, we've picked up some nannies and some young bulls, but again, they're not the animals we're looking for, but we're gonna sit out for another half hour to an hour and see what comes out. There's some younger bulls quite high on the face, which is a good sign. There might be other bulls about the fact that there's nannies down a bit lower. That's also a good thing too. Um, at this time of the year, there should be the old bull kicking about. So this time of night, the tar starts to move around a lot more. Their catch with that is it's a lot colder. So sitting still is tough, but uh, see what these guys do and then we'll start moving back towards camp. Got some more tar. Good spotting. Starting to come out of here at the moment. Sitting down. I mean, we're not going to be shooting any of these. Yeah, I reckon we make some tracks. What do you think? I guess so. Well, it's been an awesome first day. We've been scoping out the area. We've seen quite a few tar. Amongst those tar have been plenty of good bulls. So it's starting to chill down a bit now. So we're going to pack our way back to camp and get a good warm meal into us. Pretty excited about tomorrow. Seen all those animals today, it's got me pretty ripped up. Yeah, I reckon so. I'd like to check out some of that scrub country, but I mean, I'm still surprised that those tar are living in some of that country up there. Bugger all feed. <sighs> Jesus, it's quite chilly now. <laughs> Summertime hunting is where it's at. It's warm, days are long, but then you don't get to see any lip cooling. No, it's nowhere near as cool. The morning brings with it more clear, crisp weather, so we waste little time in cracking on with our search for a trophy bull. And it's certainly an effective way to wake yourself up in the morning while wading across an icy cold river. So it's the second morning, and we've just crossed the creek and looked back up 
into the face where there's a few animals yesterday and we've straight away spotted two bulls. They're down quite low, so it could be a shooting opportunity here. Yeah, straight into the action, straight from camp. Gonna be a case of actually seeing whether these things are worth shooting or not. Just can't see him. Yeah, I can see him. He's down and if he, right against the oh, snow. Yeah. I can see his hooks quite well in this um, shot here. There's two of them. There's a bit of snow slough and he's just to the right of that. Yeah, that top one's sort of about 11 inch mark, 10 yeah. and a half, 11. Let's see if I can get in on him. Oh, yeah, the other one's come up below him. Whereabouts? Just below oh, yeah. oh yeah, I see you. Definitely a bigger animal, eh? Yeah. Hooks come back. They dive in. He's not a giant giant, but he's a shooter. He's definitely the, one of the better ones we've seen. He's got that proper curl back. They've got that heart shape to the top yeah. of his touch and go 12 though. So it's two bulls here. One of them's certainly not what we're after. And the other one, while he's not the biggest trophy, he's certainly representative. He's got nice sort of long horns, curl right back and get the nice hook shape. So uh, he's, he's what we're after, whether he's in a position now, he's moved up at the hill a bit further, whether he's in a position we can retrieve him if we shoot him. Maybe he's squaring up, they have to have a bit of a biffo. Oh, maybe he's just walked past him. Yeah, he's got a big heavy mane. Yeah, he's got good, good hooks, man. Yeah. But he's not going to be the trophy of a lifetime. Well, it's definitely not one for the 7 mil mag, because he's out of range now. I think he's gone too far now, He's eh? out of range. Like is telling me, in a great position now, on top of that rock. 620 to him. Where he was this morning was 500 true range. Well, you know, it's the same old thing with tar hunting is you see an animal like this on their way up to sort of their sunning zone, and if you want to catch up again later in the day, you know, you've got to wait out that afternoon period for them to come back down to their feed zones. Where he first was was a perfect day because he would have probably fallen down a bit better. Where he is now, he's probably going to get stuck. Yeah. I think we've missed our window opportunity in terms of range because they're heading up slope to their sunning areas. So it may be a case potentially of waiting them out till later in the day. He's a nice looking animal. He's got a great coat on him, eh? Big puff ball. He's almost like he's limping, eh? Yeah. I think he is limping. He's limping in his front left leg. Someone's off he had a go at him. He's still a dominant bull, which often happens. So where that bull's climbed to, it's not so much that he's out of range anymore. It's in a position where if we do shoot him, he's not going to fall into a recoverable position. Not without an extreme climb around, so we're just best to bide our time, wait for a better shooting opportunity. With tar hunting, it's not always about shooting the animal, recovering the animal is the hard part. So I think what we'll do is we'll head downstream, look in through some of the other country. We know he's living here now with the nannies. It's bloody good to see first thing in the morning, oh hey, some bulls just like that. Well we've climbed out of the spot that we were in the riverbed early this morning to look into some new country and since we've done that we've managed to pick up a lot of tar that have that are just on the sun line as, as the sun's starting to touch our faces. So we've got the binos working, but we've also brought along the old Nikon P900, which is pretty handy these days. Some of the cameras you can use in conjunction with your spotter to help you identify some of the game that you're looking at. And this one has got great optical zoom, 24 to 2000 millimeters. So it's pretty impressive, but it's just another piece of kit to carry on the hill, but definitely worth it in our case. When you're looking at bulls, trying to determine horn size with differences, you know, an inch to an inch and a half, you know, it's good to be able to put this kind of gear on them and, and make a decent assessment on it before climbing up into some of that kind of nasty country. Both those bulls are takers. Just trying to pick them up on the camera. And oh, that one's a beauty, eh? The big top one's a goliath. It's like a gorilla. This young nanny was crossing above the bull and she kicked off some snow. I think he's bigger than the one the down that we saw earlier today, Anto. Yeah, that very top one, mate. I reckon he's a 13, eh? I'm just waiting for him to step into some snow so I can see that kind of curl in his hook. He just fell, eh? He just freaking slipped. Man, that's nasty country though, eh? Right, we need something a bit lower down. Just trying to keep warm there, Dre. Yeah. Just trying to keep the feet moving. Sitting down glasses too long. Just sort of do some Stairmaster climbs up and down here to keep my feet moving. Body warm. <laughs> So for the last two or three hours, we've been watching seven or eight good bulls up on the hillside here. There's two that we're really interested in, but like always, they're the highest out of all of them. So rather than sitting here in probably what's close to negative six degrees, we're yeah. gonna move across into the sunlight, which will help us sit still, but also it'll put us in a position that if the big bulls do move down the hillside, they'll be in a better position for us to take them out. I'm finding it a bit cold. It's a bit of a shock to the system, but you love it. Scrub bash. 
the old West Coast monkey scrub, eh? It's always a ball for you, all right? <laughs> There's a little rise up here. See that little flew that rock is? It's nice and flat. I'm just about to break up into the tussock and um, there's an animal sitting probably a couple hundred meters away from us. So we're just gonna have a look at him, it's a bull. I was gonna see if he's mature enough. But there's quite a lot of animals up just ahead of us, which is what we saw this morning when we were on the other side. No, he's nothing nothing big. No, he's not the one we're after, not just a young animal, about ten and a half inches. He's only an immature bull. Carry on. Nice looking animal there but still not, not the one we're after. He's a bigger bull, but he's not a curler. How about this one crossing up the rocks here? No good. That one up there is not that great. The one climbing up that rock base. Mm. Doesn't curl in. Oh, I found another bull. Yeah. This one here's better, Andre. Right on that cusp of that edge. He's seen us this way. Oh, geez, he's looking all right, though. Yeah. There's animals everywhere. There's a whole bunch of nannies in that gut, eh? Yeah. Gee, he looks a bit more serious. But no, I don't know, it's not, they're not trophy bulls, eh? There's a tar right there. There's a tar just right there. No, he's nothing, nothing big. Oh, there's one there, it's right on the edge there. Can you see him? Yeah, he's got lip curling going on. But still not the one we're after. Oh, mate, this one here's a ripper. Check this one out. Oh yeah. This one's a taker for sure. Oh yeah, he's a curler. He's a taker, mate. He's a curler. Well, he curves right back. Good mane. His kidney stripes go way back. Yep. Yep. Let's take him. Okay, so we've just seen sort of five or six bulls around us. Um, we've definitely seen one that we want to take. He's he's a mature animal, got nice hooks. So rather than waste too much time, we're going to try and take him while he's on our wee face. If he goes over the other side, we might lose our chance. So we don't have much time. Just get on top of this rock and we'll set up there, right? 439 from here. We go across here to that rock and just shoot straight up. Gain 100 yards and shoot 350. Let's aim for those two Spaniards there. That's a... We'll try and close that gap as quick as we can. We've got a little uh, ledge that we can see our ball from, so we're just going to put our packs down and get a good rest. Arrange them and look to take them when the moment's right. He's about 350, 400 for us, we'll check with the range in a minute. He's right on the top. Look at him, you can see him blonde in the sky right now. Right on the crest. We're at 370 yards from where the bull was when I saw it. We just gotta get our stuff sorted and then we'll hopefully get a shot away. So he's going down now. He's coming back down. He's not quite, he's breaking away, so I'll wait till he's a bit more broadside. I'd wait till he comes dead side on. Yeah, I'll wait till he comes around. Just gonna wait for him to step round. Looking straight at us. <laughs> Another ball's in the way, eh? What do you reckon? Straight on at the moment. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Take him, eh? Yeah. You hit him. Good shot. That was a hit. He ran to the left. He's down, isn't he? Didn't come down the side we wanted it to, though, eh? Nah. I was hoping that he would come straight down. It's just not going our way. It's a good bull. 4.15. It's dark in an hour and a half. He's up in some nasty country, eh? Get into it. It's now a bit of a race against the light to get up into the air where the big bull fell. It's getting pretty moody now. <laughs> Although en route, we run into a few other distractions. There's a bull up there, look. You see it? Oh, it's pretty good, eh? Should we push up the ridge just to see if the other one's lying? Yeah, I think so. About 150, 200 yards from where the bull that Andre shot is. Um, there's another couple of good bulls sticking themselves out, so we're assessing them as well. But at the moment, we decided to focus on just doing a recovery. We were going to go back, but at the last minute, we decided we'd go give it a good nudge, seeing we had a little bit of light. We're pushing our limits a wee bit, but we do have good torches. We've GPS the way we've come, and the way we get here hasn't been too bad. So it might just mean a late night. Unfortunately, despite our best efforts, the extreme terrain makes finding a viable passage to the top simply too dangerous. 
Oh, let's just leave it. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting a bit gnarly to start climbing around this time of the night. Just go back to camp, come back and find it tomorrow. It's going to be a big day tomorrow. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that was a goodie. Whew. Crampons tomorrow. Crampons, ice axe, straight up. We'll take one rifle, just in case. Pack light. Hopefully come down heavy. Chicken corn and noodle. It's a good hand warmer too. Oh, Andre, that bull obviously went the wrong way today. True, like sometimes tar hunting in this type of terrain. It's not the actual um, shot that's the hard part, but actually retrieving the animal to test you. Yeah, I think uh, tomorrow morning, up early, crampons, ice axes, and we'll get back in there and find them. Well, it's first light now. We've got um, our gear together. We're going to pack pretty light and get up to where we were yesterday and uh, push on and try and find that tail we put down. So hopefully we're going to see that play out today. Running laps, mate. You're trying to warm up. Well, it's easy stuff out of the way. I'm going to duck into this monkey scrub now, which is always a bit of, bit of fun. When you're travelling in this monkey scrub country, if you can, look out for bluff systems like I'm standing beside now. There's usually a good path that runs along the base, a lot better than bush bashing non-stop. Just keep in mind, any falling debris or rock above you. With lightweight packs, we make quick work of a climb back up into tar territory. And for once, the bitter cold is a help rather than a hindrance, keeping body temperatures comfortable despite the physical exertion required. Yeah, you know, with a clear sky, everything's frozen up a bit. Listen to them all whistling at us. So we're just starting to get up to the higher country now. We're not too far from where the bull should be. So just for safety, time to cramp on up and get the ice axes out. Then we'll be back into it. No point carrying an ice axe if it's strapped to your pack. It's better in your hand. An ice axe, crampons and climbing rope are essential safety tools for deep winter hunting above the tree line. Even though these tools can make climbing in the steeper reaches easier, it's never without risk. Just because you're carrying these tools doesn't make you immune to the dangers on the hill. We have to have our wits about us, especially now we're up into an area that's been warmed by the sun's rays. It's hard to convey the steepness on camera, but it's physically and mentally taxing to keep concentration levels high. And as the hours tick by, it seems every route we take leads to a dead end. So we got to about 100 yards from where we believe the bull's located. We're going up a pretty sketchy bit of country there and I got to 9.5 out of 10, so pretty much decided it was at my limit. So I backed out and these boys carried on for a little bit, but it proved it was just a little bit tough. We're in a pretty uh, an extreme and inhospitable part of the block right now. Oh Christ. A wee bit unnerving too, we're on the sunny face. The sun's starting to melt a bit, bits and pieces of snow and ice and things are tumbling down, things are getting a bit unstable, so there's no animal worth your life. And when you get out of your comfort zone, it's always better probably just to stop, regather and back out. And there's always another way, so we're gonna give it another go yet. There's the top, right there where we shot the tar. May as well be a million miles away. Hey, it's getting um, waterline again. It's gonna give you wits about you. So we've pushed right up high, trying to second angle to get it to this bull. Andre's still pushed on, trying to get in closer at the moment. Time's against us today, so I'm about to go pack up camp while Andre has one last ditch effort of trying to retrieve the bull. We're still surrounded by bulls all around us. There's another one up here that would certainly be a taker if it was the first day of the trip, but we're pretty focused. We found the one we wanted, and we shot him, and then it was all about the recovery from then on. Hopefully Andre can get it, but if he can't, it's a lesson learned. If he had a fallen the way he was facing on the face that we shot him on, it would have been a nice easy pickup just over here. The way he veered off to the right, when you would have seen on the shot, he sent him over into no man's land. So with a little bit of luck, Andre might get him, but at this stage it's looking pretty doubtful, so I'm going to head back to camp, pack up and get ready. What's the verdict? Nah mate. Pretty close, but no cigar. It's just too dangerous. Heard it from the horse's mouth, the tongue and tar. If it's too tough for the tongue and tar, it's far too tough for me. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have to pull pin, head back to camp and uh, chop her out of here. But uh, can't say we didn't try.
A year later, and we're back on the coast, seeking to avenge our unsuccessful mission from the year prior. However, this time, we're heading into an entirely new block with an entirely new pairing of Hunters Club members. Well, yeah, so here we are in the stunning Westland uh, Glacier country. About to depart for our uh, tar block. Luckily, we've got a bit of a break in the weather. It's been raining for about three weeks on the coast, and it uh, looks like we've picked a pretty good window to come into. On that top ridge in the distance there, you just see, compared to how still it is here, how strong the winds are blowing. You can see the snow coming off the ridge and blowing off the easterly. Yeah, I wasn't expecting those winds, eh? I knew it. Always a bit of a sense of bloody anxiousness, I suppose, eh? Look at this guitar, eh? Coming down there. Huge gas out, thanks, mate. Awesome. Well, I'm glad I'm out of that thing, actually, to be honest. Yeah, so, uh, Himalayan base camp set up, and uh, in between some fairly, fairly vicious. Um, bursts of wind, we've managed to get them up, so that's all good. Just going to try and build a bit of a wall out of some snow so we can get our cooker in there and get a brew on because I know, I know I'm know i pretty keen for something hot in the guts. It's fairly chilly up here, but all good, it's good to be here. So, as you can see here, it's pretty blustery. There's a mad easterly shooting over and funneling down this valley where we are. These tents that we've set up, it's very important in these conditions to bring your guy ropes with you. A lot of people don't seem to carry them or set them up and you don't have to a lot of the time if you're in calm conditions. But as you can see here, this tent, this whole tent's buckling. And what we've done is we've reinforced and anchored the side which is facing the wind. Because without that, there's so much flex in this tent that the whole thing wants to move. But these tents, we're going to get battered tonight. And apparently we're going to get battered a bit harder tomorrow. So, it shouldn't be anything these marmot tents can't handle. That's what they're built for. So what the tar ballot block that Doc Run allow you to do is actually provide you landing sites, you have the rights in your ballot period to land and it just allows in this wilderness area to fly in for a change, otherwise it would only be foot access. But as you can see, some of this country, it's not exactly easy to get into by foot. Especially we've had pretty much three weeks of rain here on the coast, it's been just coming down pretty heavy. So a lot of these rivers and a lot of the routes that you'd normally take to get up into some of this country over three or four days, it's not even possible. So hopefully over the next few days we might be able to get some good footage of a running bull tar or a running chamois buck and um, if we're lucky we might even get a shot away at something. What are your thoughts Yuli? My thoughts are just pretty much kind of sit here till dark really and just glass the, the surrounding country. Haven't spotted anything obvious yet. Do you think uh, Emma's going to be happy seeing Dan what he's doing right now? I think she'll be happy seeing the back of Dan for a week actually. <laughs> yeah, give her a break in space. There's a bull. It's pretty much straight over Curly's head, right? There's sort of like those terracy bluffs sort of work their way up, and he's tucked into like a wee cave. Oh, we're on the board. First animals of the trip. Uh, we've got at least one bull, and uh, probably two to three nannies that I've seen so far, just held up in a bit of a bluff system, quite high from our position at the moment. Uh, sort of scoping out this broken tussock country in front of us for some chamois. Sort of go a bit higher and straight away sort of into some tar country, so good sign. He's, he's quite an old bull, eh? Can't quite tell how big he is yet, but looking at the mass of his horn and the size of his body and even his face and some of his colourations, he looks like he might have a few years on him, so quite a positive start. What we do now is we start ranging some of the spurs between us and him, so you can start trying to pick whether you could pick a line to a spur that you could shoot from. And with this, strong strong wind and even you can see it on the bull on his on his coat you don't want to be taking long risky shots you just want to get in as close as you can and make sure that bullet isn't um, subjected to too much too much crosswind he's starting to move around a bit more now stretch his legs might get a better look at him so it's quite a good animal it's definitely a mature animal but first night yeah. i reckon maybe what do you reckon just have a real good look around and yeah well i think we are sort of losing light now Let's try and scan a bit more country and pick something else up Oh, just here, just here, just here. 
Julie, what is it? A bull running into our camp. He's run down there. There's another one up there. Oh, that's another bull. Dave's out there. Bull. Directly over the top of this tent. Oh, right here, right here. Is that a good bull? No, he's not. Okay. So what we've got here is we've just had a bull run into camp. Here's our tents. And we've got a bull just here. 50 yards. 50 yards. What about the other bulls? See the other bull? Yeah. I'll see like for size up top. Coming down, go get your rifle away. So we've got a bull on camp, just a young guy. About 11 inches. And we've got a bigger bull coming through the top. Making his way over. Bro, that could be a proper bull. Go get your gun. I'm going to get the scope on him. There's another bull coming. Over there? Yep. Lip curling hard. He's doing a lot of lip curling, but no, I don't think so. No good, the far right. Nah. Ah. It's quite a hard case uh, turn of events here. Sort of just popped our head over to have a look at some new country and uh, we've all of a sudden got four bulls and uh, one nanny visible, you know, sort of within 200 yards. Um, one of them looks reasonable, so we're, we're assessing him. We've got the spotting scope on him. No good. Yeah, they're all young. This one's the best one. Yeah. Standing straight looking at us. So it's quite remarkable, but we've just had three bulls walk effectively into our camp. This guy's got a few nannies. They all look sort of around that 11 inch mark. See this guy up here, it's quite cool. Just staring us down. So that's uh, four bulls. And still the bull we've spotted first this evening. Seems to be the best bull, got the most horn mass. Whereas these other young guys, beautiful looking animals at this time of year, they've got such big coats that you're initially fooled by just the mass of the body, but just younger animals. Well, I can't complain about that, can we, Yuli? No, that was pretty cool, mate, to be honest. Like, I've seen I've seen Shammy do that, you know, because they're the curious animal, they'll come and have a look. I've yeah, never yeah. seen Baltar running in 50 yards from camp, yeah. though, eh? That was pretty special, so. Well, I think because we were milling down in the spotting scope and that, we probably looked like we're on all fours like an animal. Yeah. But next thing, they're, they're coming in for a look. Yeah. Thinking you were on heat, going to give you a go. Well, well, they do call you curly, don't they? <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me if they move into some of that scrub, that more feed country. Mm. But uh, speaking of moving into something a little bit more comfortable, that black stag sleeping bag's looking pretty good about now. Yeah, you're all right. Tuck into the uh, sleeping bags and see what tomorrow brings. We've got to boil up some water for a, for a coffee and a bit of a feed, and then we'll um, yeah, get our boots on and get the binos out as soon as it's light to start glassing really. Fairly clear skies and it's, it's looking, looking really nice out there at the moment. Yeah, this tail right at the base, they've come down off this hill, obviously through the night, clear night, full moon, which allows animals to feed around. They've come down, that's why often people say the hunting isn't so good after a full moon, because it gives the animals an ability to feed right through the night and be less active during the day. So we got up this morning and we've decided to take a good look around camp first. With these tar like this, we're right in amongst it, so instead of just trekking off and crunching through the ice and disturbing animals, you're better off just finding your target for the day and going after it. So we've spotted the, the biggest bull we saw last night, but we've also spotted a new bull that's living in the scrub, coming up out of the scrub. He's heading back into the scrub now, so he's actually on the very fast spur, holding a couple of nannies. He's definitely a fairly mature bull holding up in that scrub on that fast spur. So we've been humming and harring deciding whether there's been a bull worth chasing this morning and we've seen some sort of more immature animals down low. We're not convinced any of them are worth chasing yet but way up high here we've spotted what looks to be a mature animal. He's, his movements are slow, he's on his own, he's not running around chasing nannies, he's just watching, observing and he looks looks good, bulky body, bulk to his horns but we can't tell exactly whether he's a, a shooter or not but um, he might be the mature animal we're after. It's amazing being up high like this, you get a really good view over all the country, all the nooks and crannies. It gives you just a little bit more advantage as to being down low and not being able to necessarily see over benches and undulations. So you feel like a bit of a bird of prey really, looking down and looking for movement. And The only, I guess, downside is just it's a bit of an ice box up in here. So um, we sort of tend to freeze and we're on the cold side so we're not likely to see the sun all day. So just ranging, ranging the 
the best bull that we've seen is currently 597 line of sight, 560 through the listic range. We're sort of thinking do we have a go at him sooner rather than later because we've got a bit of clag coming in off the ocean there so we all know what that can do on the coast. As it does on the coast quite a bit, there's a bit of sea fog rolling in now, so we've made the call, let's get up there and we won't miss an opportunity, we'll pull out the spotter, take a look at him and decide where there's a shooter. What about you, Willie? What are you up to? Well, I'm just going to hang back here and hopefully uh, keep the bull's attention focused down on me, because he is actually looking down every now and then. Via radio contact, we will stay in touch. If we'd identified this bull as being as big as we've ever seen in our lives, we probably would have climbed up high and come right round and dropped down a gut out of sight, the way we're going up now, we are going to have to be in the open for a wee bit, so it just pays to sort of keep your body low, and you're more likely to be interpreted as an animal. Yeah, he's moving off. Has he gone right or left? He's gone left and up. I see him on the spur. Bit of an average approach there, and the bulls just decide to, to walk off. Seeing us coming along, he's thinking he's not sticking around. There he is, sticking his head up over there. He's just going higher and higher and higher. He's just starting to move on now, but he's he's a nice bull, like he's beautiful. He's got good body, he's got a nice mane, but he's a bit short in the horn probably, considering it's only first day hunting, you know. We've got a lot of time, we should have a lot of animals. We've seen quite a few animals, so yeah, I think we've just decided here that while it is a nice bull and it would look pretty cool to see a big bull like that being shot, but it's also just as nice seeing them slowly snake off through the deep snow and being left for another day. And where he is now, Recovery is starting to look, you know, like there could be an issue. It probably would probably be fine, but also it's just getting to the point where he's, he's on a spur. If your shot wasn't bang on and didn't sack him right where he was, there's a good chance he's going to head with the shot, even with a fatal shot, around the corner, which is country we haven't even looked at or assessed. So um, you could get up there and disappointingly find that you can't recover him, and it just ends up being a waste of an animal. Search continues. Rightio, so after receiving our uh, weather forecast via sat phone, we've just decided to head up river, stay handy to our base camp, which we'll come back to tonight. It's supposed to blow up again tonight, so we're going to have a look upstream, hopefully get onto some animals up there, and then plan for tomorrow is to come back and um, get our tents on our backs and, and head downstream. Nanny and the kid. Nanny and the kid just in front of us, top of the snow. There'll be a bull handy today somewhere. When you run into nannies like this in the rut, there's a good chance this time of day bull's not with them, they're sort of watching them somewhere up, bedded down, but there's also a chance that there could be a bull just sniffing up rock behind them. Lucky we're not meat hunting. That kid looks pretty tasty. As the fickle weather comes and goes, the lads continue onwards, ascending a few hundred metres higher into the upper reaches of the block. Climbing opens up new terrain hidden from view by the steep bluffs. But there's a downside of the gain in altitude. The snow up here is a lot softer and deeper. But it's well worth it for the amount of new country on offer. Been parked up here for about an hour and a half now, just waiting for um, nannies to start moving around. And three nannies have just come out of a bluff system up in the snow. It's all going well, maybe a bull might spot those walking across the snow and decide to come down for a sniff, but we're sort of getting hopeful now that we've seen a few animals that the bull won't be far away. The lads plough on up the valley in spite of the deepening snow, which is making travel in these higher reaches quite taxing. But it's hardly anything to write home about for the hardy Himalayan natives they're seeking to find. They're well used to these conditions, in fact they relish them, often seeking out strong winds on high ridgelines to help cool themselves down. Down here in the gut. Oh. Nothing to write home about, eh? So that's quite good numbers. How about the time? 10 past 4. Oh, I guess we'll probably give it until 4.30 here, don't worry, don't they? 4? Yeah. Well, we've always got our tracks to follow. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say that top one looked quite big before, but... They're not big balls. Nah. We're going to pull out, mate. Just getting fairly fair up here. Howling wind and snow in the face, it's not good. 
So I'm after watching these you know, five or six nannies and a younger bull. We were just hoping and hoping a big bull was going to step out, but it never showed. Uh, it's getting a bit later in the day now. We've got a big, big mission to get off this hill too, so we're going to we're going to pull pin early and get back to camp. Get out of this weather. It's cool cool us down pretty quick. So it's pretty easy to move, and I. That weather settled a bit, eh? Yeah, yeah. Good to see camp still here. To be fair, beautiful night. Not a not a breath of wind. We've got up a bit early this morning on our way back to camp. Last night we saw a bull that's worth a closer look. We put the lead lenses away so we'll try and get in just on a bit of moonlight. We just want to try and limit the amount of um, disturbance we create by walking through, sneaking up with the torches on. Because the tar sometimes will just look down and they'll be ready to give a whistle and take off back up into the bluffs as soon as light comes. So see if the moon's our friend today and see if we can find a taker. There's a bull. Oh yeah, yeah. He's already on to us. So the bull's already on to us even in this light. We're going to sneak out to a position that we might get a shot. And one at a time. Yeah. Just sort of first light coming up, we're sneaking through to hopefully get a shot at this bull that we seen last night. Sure enough he's in the, pretty much the same spot and uh, already looking down at us. So uh, what we're going to do is Curly's just crept off and we're just going to try and take it one by one. Just uh, less movement across the hill. As Sam and Dan reach a suitable vantage point to get a shot away at the weary tar, Sam notices a vital detail that completely changes the situation. Hang on, Curly. I think this fella's only got one horn. Yeah, he's got one horn, eh? So that was pretty lucky we didn't end up pulling the trigger. So we're just lined up, and Yuli's just identified as a spotter. This guy's only got one horn. <laughs> so we're not going to shoot him. That was intense, eh? Lucky I spotted that. Yeah. As soon as you said it, I looked, and I was like, ah. Oh. He's a character trophy. He won't ever, he won't ever grow another. We're not really after a one horner. Much, are they? So unfortunately we've, we haven't managed to find a mature, mature bull that we were hoping to find up in the uh, bluff system behind us. We found a few nannies and a few younger looking bulls but the big, big boy didn't show unfortunately. So we're going to head back to camp, um, get our gear together and, and slowly make our way around that face, aiming for that snowy ledge in the distance there where we'll, we'll probably set up camp and, and go away for an evening hunt. We're just going to make our way through to another scrubby spur and Looks like our scrub ball's just still bedded down over there, so we're going to get another couple of hundred metres on them and, and pull the spotter out and have a, have a good look. For the people at home that don't do a lot of tar hunting, on the west coast here you get, you get your two types of bulls. You get the guys that are up in the up in the craggle, up in the snow, super high, and then you also get the guys that are just hanging out a bit lower in the, in the scrub, which is actually fairly thick, you know, head height in places, and uh, yeah, a bit more cover for them down there, so they've just sort of evolved, and um, some of the time the scrub balls do have better heads, so. It's got us, got us excited anyway. Righto, let's get down there. Even when you're travelling from A to B in this type of country, you have to be on your toes at all times, as these alpine animals seem to have the ability to appear out of nowhere. There's always a chance of a memorable encounter around each corner and over every rise. There is. Looking straight at him. Just keep low. He's just in this wee fold here. But he was right there. Then we're going to sit on that wee rock there. There he is. Right here. Here's his head. Here's his head. So um, we've just come up to this snowy saddle that we talked about earlier. And uh, one of the smaller bulls that we spotted this morning is just coming for a closer look. Not, not even 20 yards away. He's just standing there quite curious. Coming and going and whistling. and Doesn't seem too phased, but really cool to get up close to these animals, eh? whether it's a big trophy or just a or just a young one, you know, it's, it's really special, especially with the, the snow falling like it is now, it's really setting the scene. Close encounter with a young bull tar is always a bit of a treat for when you're hunting and even for the camera and people looking back home, it's nice to get that close to an animal and not necessarily shoot it, just watch it do its thing. It's quite special. I'm going to carry on heading for camp. Oh, there's got to be some more bulls around, eh? Oh, there's a big bull up there. And the rocks to the right. Yeah, mate. Yeah, bull. Yeah. He looks good too, big mate. So we've just seen on the skyline a few animals. We've had a good look, a couple of young bulls, a couple of nannies, and a big Monty bull. Probably sitting between 12 and 13, maybe, yeah. maybe pushing it. Yeah. He's a proper bull, eh? Yeah, he's a decent big winter puff bull. Yeah, no, he's a shooter, bro. He's coming down, he's chasing a nanny, he's on that next bluff over now. 
You know, he's got good horns, man. Mate, there's a lot of wind up there. You can just see it through his mane, it's howling up there. It's going right to left, isn't it? It's all right, we can just watch, eh, if we want to. Quite windy, quite a serious crosswind, so we're going to try and kill about another 65 metres. Put us to just over 300 metres, but Bull's got his head in the hole. We'll just wait him out and see if we can uh, be confident enough to take a shot and try and get this guy. <sighs> Exciting times, this is a proper bull. Goes up ahead. Get him behind a rock so, we, so we're not seen. Fingers crossed it all goes to plan. We uh, just got up to the rock where we were hoping to get a shot from, but we can't actually see the ball, so we're gonna have to we're just gonna go around to the left a bit more. And hope hopefully open up a bit more angle. Good spot has been the tabletop here, I've set up on here. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll get over here with the spotter mate, keep an eye on him for you. Feel comfy? Yeah, I'm real comfy here. Yeah, no, this is this is good. Yeah, nice. He's still got his head in that hole. But that that breeze, see in his mane there, it's howling up there, eh? Turning broadside yet? Early? Yeah, I'm gonna take the shot. You have him when you're ready, mate. Yeah, you whacked him, mate. You whacked him. Give him another, give him another if you can. Oh, he's reared up, he's reared up. Yeah, he ain't going nowhere. Nice one, boy. You ripper. Yeah, mate, you've whacked him hard. He reared up like heart shot. Ah, oh, good, yeah, I can see him, yeah, he's, yeah. he's bugging. Yeah, I was hoping he was going to come down that chute, but looks like we've got a bit of a climb on our hands now. Ah, oh, ripper. <laughs> oh, that was good. He's a good ball. I think he's a good ball, yeah. Yeah, I think he's a cracker actually. Nice one mate, good hunt. Awesome. Okay, we're running out of light, so let's get up there before this weather completely claps out on us. Bringing you step? Oh yeah. Certainly, uh, beach just climbing the mountain for the hell of it. You know you've got something at the end. Fight at the end of the rainbow. Despite the freezing conditions and the arduous climb, it's moments like this that you really do live for as a hunter. It's that unique excitement that comes from the prospect of seeing your hard-earned trophy up close for the first time. And there's always that faint hope that it might just be something truly special. Cutting your steps for you, mate. Here he is, Curly. Another couple of steps, mate. Moment of truth. Yeah, it looks pretty good, eh? See a good set of hooks. Happy with that? Yeah. Have to be happy with that. We're just gonna have a quick measure up. What that? What do we got? 12 and a... Just on 12 and a half. 12 and a half. Nice. 12 and a half inch bull. You can see there, it's just starting to curl back. And um, this is where you start getting your extra inch or two. That's a trophy bull, mate. That's the best bull we've seen this trip. And we nailed it. Work it, Curly. Oh, that's a good pick, mate. Yeah, mean backdrop there. Here's one for the pool room, boy. I'm not actually going to take the head skin off this animal. I've got quite a nice bull tar up on the wall already. And I think this is destined to be a Euro mount where you bleach up the skull and put it on a shield and maybe even put a plaque. You know, I think the boys probably, even though we love our back country, we might whip out a bit of meat and have a fry up, eh? <laughs> you ripper. <laughs> bit of iron. <laughs> yeah. oh, I tell you what, mate, it's always good to be off those uh, those icy hills and into your scratcher. Got a bit of a feed brewing here and reflect on the day. It's been one heck of a day. Yeah, just luckily it sort of all panned out for us. But you know what, mate? It's a bit of redemption for Anto and Andre. Some of their troubles in the hills, their challenges, really. Couldn't ask for anything more.